This is Dr. Cal Shipley with a review of Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. Carpal Tunnel Syndrome refers to a neuropathy, or nerve disorder, of the median nerve. Carpal Tunnel Syndrome is so named because the nerve dysfunction occurs as the median nerve passes through the carpal tunnel in the wrist and hand. Typically, the neuropathy occurs as a result of compression or traction of the nerve within the carpal tunnel. Like many disorders of the human body, knowledge of the underlying anatomy in carpal tunnel syndrome is essential to understanding the disease process. In order to reach the hand, the median nerve must pass through the carpal tunnel outlined in white here. The wrist flexion crease is a prominent skin crease which marks the border between the wrist and the hand. The wrist flexion crease overlies the proximal border of the carpal tunnel. Let's start by peeling away the various soft tissue structures until we reach the carpal bones of the wrist, which form the floor of the tunnel. Lying atop the carpal bones is a group of muscle tendons responsible for flexion of the hand and fingers. Surrounding the muscle tendons are synovial sheaths, noted in blue here. The sheaths isolate the tendons and allow for friction-free movement in this crowded anatomical compartment. The median nerve lies atop the tendon sheaths, approximately in the midline. Providing the roof over the carpal tunnel is the transverse carpal ligament. The transverse carpal ligament is a thick, strong, fibrous band formed from interwoven bundles of fibrous connective tissues. As a result of its structure, it lacks the ability to stretch when the pressure within the carpal tunnel increases. This lack of stretchiness is a major contributing factor in the onset of carpal tunnel syndrome. Both sides of the transverse carpal ligament are firmly attached to carpal bones, on the thumb side to the trapezium and the scaphoid bones, and on the opposite side to the hook of the hamate and the pisiform bone. To sum up, the floor of the carpal tunnel is composed of rigid carpal bones and the roof is composed of the fibrous, non-distendable, transverse carpal ligament, which is firmly attached on both sides to carpal bones. The carpal tunnel contains a small amount of fluid, shown in green here. The fluid fills in any space that exists between the tendons, the median nerve, the carpal bones, and the transverse carpal ligament. From a physics point of view, the carpal tunnel acts like a closed space. In other words, if the volume of any of the contents within the carpal tunnel increases, pressure within the tunnel will also be increased, and the median nerve may be compressed, resulting in neuropathy. Which of the carpal tunnel contents, then, are most likely to increase in volume and therefore result in compression of the median nerve? While not all researchers agree, it appears most likely that the synovial sheaths of the flexor tendons are the culprits. As demonstrated here, thickening of the synovial sheaths results in compression of the median nerve. In this example, to make the point, I've shown the synovial thickening compressing the median nerve against the transverse carpal ligament. However, because the carpal tunnel acts like a closed space, 
Synovial thickening in any direction may increase carpal tunnel pressure and result in nerve compression without compressing the nerve against other structures. The thickening of the synovial sheaths is a chronic process which takes place over months or years. Swelling and inflammation of the synovial sheaths is termed tenocytovitis. There appear to be several risk factors underlying the onset of chronic tenocytovitis and subsequent carpal tunnel syndrome due to median nerve compression. These include age, race, and gender. chronic inflammatory conditions of the bones and joints, such as rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, obesity, occupations involving exposure of the hands and wrists to recurrent vibration, such as construction workers who operate jackhammers, and last but by no means least, occupations involving repetitive flexion and extension of the fingers, hand, and wrist, such as office workers working with computer keyboards and mice musicians, construction workers, and grocery checkout employees. It is important to note that this is just a partial list of the many risk factors and physical conditions that have been associated with the onset of carpal tunnel syndrome. And, as with many disorders of the human body, there is still considerable controversy regarding the causes of carpal tunnel syndrome, particularly with respect to the last item on this list. The symptoms of median nerve compression in carpal tunnel syndrome are primarily sensory until the more advanced stages of the disorder. The median nerve supplies sensation to the thumb and thenar eminence of the palm, as well as the palm side of the second, third, and the medial or inner half of the fourth finger. The classic symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome occur within this area of sensory innervation and consist of numbness, tingling, and burning pain. These symptoms are often increased at night due to the fluid shift that occurs from the lower half of the body to the upper half of the body when laying in a horizontal position for several hours. An overall increase in upper body fluid levels at night results in increased fluid within the carpal tunnel and greater compression of the median nerve. Symptoms may radiate into the forearm and in some cases as high as the shoulder on the affected side. In more advanced cases, muscles of the fingers and hand innervated by the median nerve may be affected, resulting in difficulty grasping objects and wasting of the muscles of the thenar eminence.